when it comes to my job, frankly, I couldn't care less what two consenting adults do in the comfort of their own bedroom or, or, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And that is their business. It's not my business. Um, you know, I practice my faith in a particular way. They won't share my faith. They can do what they like within the bounds of of the law as mm-hmm. consenting adults. And that is a fundamental distinction that I would make. There are three candidates hoping to replace Nicola Sturgeon as SNP leader and First Minister of Scotland next month. The latest one to join the race, and currently the bookie's favourite, is the current Finance Minister, uh, Kate Forbes, and we can speak to her now. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm sure you've been asked this before, but can you give us your one minute, or it can be less, 30-second pitch to be the next First Minister of Scotland? Well, the next... First Minister needs to have vision, experience and competence, and I have all three. I think right now the public want us to get to grips with the economy, cost of living crisis. I've been Finance Minister for the last few years, including through COVID. And I think they also want somebody who's fresh-faced and new to give them a new vision and to reach out not just across the SNP, but actually across Scotland. Mm. Now, you've had to address, um, as is always the case with any candidate, um, any potential uh, sticking points when it comes to um, existing policies and your own views, um, specifically, I suppose, on on, uh, same-sex marriage. Um, You've said that you would have voted against gay marriage. Um, And, 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 well, just explain how you... How you can have, uh, how you can justify, how you think that that is compatible with leading a progressive political party? Well, the first thing I would say that in this country, equal marriage is a legal right, and mm. I am a servant of democracy. I am not a dictator. I respect and defend that democratic choice to the hilt. That choice was almost a decade ago in the making. Mm. I was certainly not in frontline politics. But what I've said is that in the same way that I would defend to the hilt your right in a pluralistic and tolerant society to live and to love free of harassment and fear, in the same way I would hope that people of faith could be afforded the right to practice mainstream religious teachings about marriage. In fact, those teachings are pretty common across the main religions of Islam, Christianity, Judaism and so on. So if we're saying that public office, or at least high public office, is barred to people of a particular faith or people who have a faith but can leave that faith um, as there are strict uh, elements of that faith, Mm. then it is getting into dangerous territory. But that's what happened to Tim Farron, isn't it? The former Lib Dem leader. I mean, he wasn't barred from it, but he got into difficulty squaring his faith with his his politics. Do you think he was... um, he was a victim of particular times. Do you think that might be different today? I don't think it's different today, but I think the approach I've taken is to answer straight questions Mm. with straight answers. I think the public are fed up with politicians who wriggle out and weasel out of straight answers. Mm. And I have sought to do that. Although, as you will know, Mm. from working in the media... The media answers don't necessarily allow for much nuance. And ultimately, this is a question of what does a pluralistic, tolerant society look for look like? Can we be, for example, a Germany where you have the, the Chancellor at the time, back I believe in 2017, who voted a, alongside, along conscience grounds in terms of marriage, but under her leadership, her government implemented same-sex marriage, Mm. and also had held the vote in the first place. Surely that's what pluralism looks like. And we live in a democracy. We don't live in a dictatorship. Mm. You say that you're very keen to give straight answers to straight questions, uh, and and you have done. The question that Tim Farron got into trouble over was whether gay sex was a sin. Can you answer that? Yes, I can. And I would start again by saying that... I will defend to the hilt everybody's rights. So when it comes to my job, frankly, I couldn't care less what two consenting adults do in the comfort of their own bedroom or or, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that is their business. It's not my business. Um, 
you know, I practice my faith in a particular way, they won't share my faith. They can do what they like within the bounds of of the law as mm. consenting adults. And that is a fundamental distinction that I would make. So the, the distinction here is that it's possible for you to say that gay sex is a sin because of your faith, but that you don't mind what people, cons consenting adults, do privately. Well, well not, well, not quite, because okay. I think the, the premise of the question is fundamentally wrong, which is it's a theological question. And if you're asking me theologically mm. what the Bible says sin is, it would say that, that sin is universal. So it is sin is a question of, of how you treat God and how you treat your neighbour. And you could be gay or straight. You could be old or young. You could be from Scotland or from elsewhere. And the question is, how do you treat God and how do you treat your neighbour? It doesn't really matter what you're doing. It matters uh, with, with how you treat God. But you've just asked me a theological question mm. and I've only answered it because you're looking for a straight answer. <laughs> I've not answered it because I'm remotely interested in pontificating about sin. Right. I'm still not completely clear, but I don't want to spend the whole interview asking the same question, and I'm, I'm sure you don't either. Um, so, I mean, I suppose people will just have to to read into it. I think people will be very, well, not all, all people, clearly we're going to talk about Hannah Bardell in a second, your SNP colleague, but many people will be very refreshed, actually, by your attitude, which is, you've asked me a question um, about same-sex marriage, and I have, I have answered it. Um, how awkward is it going to be with... Other people within the SNP, for example, like Hannah, Hannah Bardell, the SNP MP we've had on this programme before, who says, um, I would have hoped that given Kate has so many friends, including myself, who are LGBTQ and hold her and her talents in such high regard, she might have tempered her comments or at least considered her response a little bit more carefully. Um, she talks about it being hurtful and disappointing. Um, do do you regret anything that you said? Do you think you could have said things differently? Or, or what, what are you going to I, say to Hannah Bardell? I regret enormously uh, pain or hurt that's been caused because that was neither my intention um, and uh, I would seek uh, forgiveness if, if that is how it's come across. In terms of Hannah, Hannah's position, mm. you know, I guess I have tried to temper in terms of trying to present it as a position of absolutely defending her right. I don't just defend her right, mm. I celebrate her as a person. Now, she, she doesn't need me to, to speak for her, mm. but I defend her right. I defend her right to live, to make choices, to love free of harassment, fear, prejudice. And I would hope that that same approach can be taken to other minorities uh, in this country, not least people of faith. Yes. It has to be possible in a pluralistic and tolerant society mm. for me to defend your right as a minority and in the hope that you might defend my right too. Mm. Um, finally, just we, we don't have much time, I just want to ask you very, very quickly, you said that you have significant concerns about self-identification and would not have been able to vote for the gender recognition bill in its current form. Uh, you want there to be an adult conversation, which I think everyone would welcome, that would be nice, um, with the UK government about how the bill could be amended. In what way might it be amended, do you think? It's a good question and, and the reason I, I can't answer it is that it's the UK government that has said it needs to be amended without explicitly stating, as far as I can see, how it needs to be amended to make it compatible. So but do you believe in self-identification? Well, I've previously raised concerns about self-identification uh, and I think that we need as many safeguards as possible. I think actually the bill was getting there. So additional safeguards had been added in through amendments, for example, for young people who needed to, to seek uh, advice in advance of making any decisions. So I think it's possible to, to build in more safeguards. And the purpose is ultimately to give that reassurance to women who care about safe spaces and single sex spaces, as well as to avoid uh, stigmatising the, the trans community further, because we know that there, there is a process there that works. Mm. OK. Uh, Kate, thank you for t your time this morning. That is Kate Forbes. She's the current uh, finance uh, minister in Scotland and SNP leadership candidate.